Good morning, afternoon or evening, ladies and gentlemen, all in crypto here and welcome back guys on this wonderful Wednesday for another daily cryptocurrency market update. If you're on your around here every single day at 1pm UK time, we drop an update just like this one to help you guys stay up to date with the latest and greatest things happening within the crypto space, but also the broader markets. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing in this video. We're going to be starting the video off with some big news from HSBC that are looking to actually custody digital assets in 2024. Now we're going to dive into this in a little bit more detail because they do specifically specify that they are talking about tokenized assets rather than individual crypto currencies. But I think that's very sort of hinting at what's to come. Uh, we're then going to go over to a recent publication from Chainlink that look at a um, article that we've actually also done a review on from Northern Trust um, that talk about how 5 to 10% of global assets by 2030 will be tokenized. Now, there is absolutely a technological revolution taking place, guys. And our objective is to bootstrap that from an investment point of view. That's always been what we've tried to do in the crypto space. And I think there's going to be a coalition of public and private blockchains that hopefully can all interoperate. And we're still yet to have that kind of light bulb moment um, that is really going to provide the future financial system you know that, that that's really what's happening here and that's becoming more and more apparent as the days go on then we're going to get into some sort of more traditional stock news we're going to be looking at goldman sachs scott rubner saying that the markets are primed for grinding higher we'll look at the fact that jamie diamond is actually selling the CPO, ceo of um, jp morgan a lot of his shares right now now should that worry you well Usually it's not a great sign, but it's more, I think, specific to what's happening in the banking sector with the bond market. We'll talk a little bit about the stock market. Of course, you've got the likes of Microsoft at new all-time highs. Microsoft was really our golden child at the start of the year. We were predicting new all-time highs based on a, a lower down inverse head and shoulders. It got there, it's pulled back, and now it's rampaging again. And then we'll get into a little bit of Bitcoin news, look at the price, uh, and of course, talk about the dollar, which is the main objective for us right now in the short mid to potentially longer term um you know getting the dollar the dixie in its direction right is going to correspond with you getting your risk on assets um correct in terms of direction so a lot to get through as always let's start the video off by looking at uh, hsbc's recent announcement today we've just finished publishing this article do come and check out allincrypto.com guys great great place to be HSBC, a titan in the financial world, has officially announced its strategic plan to enter the digital asset custody arena in 2024. This move underscores the bank's commitment to adapting to the evolving landscape of the financial services and its focus on meeting the sophisticated needs of institutional clients. In a bold step forward, HSBC is not merely dipping its toes, but diving into the realm of digital assets. However, it's important to know that the bank's services will be tailored to tokenized securities and explicitly exclude cryptocurrencies, i.e. things like, you know, um, um, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, Polkadot, you know, some of the ones we've got down here. This decision aligns with HSBC's risk-averse stance on the volatile crypto market while still embracing the underlying blockchain technology that is rapidly transforming the sectors. They also partnered with Metico. So there is a ripple connection actually here in regards to Metico, which we know are um, active partners of Ripple. Um, you know, they're, they're also looking... Um, and working with the likes of City, several other major institutions, um, BY and Mellon, you know, it, it's happening. Uh, they're also, we've also covered an HSBC a number of times. They're tokenizing gold. They're also looking to tokenize deposits. It's a, everything is going to be ran on the blockchain, ladies and gentlemen, or distributed ledgers. Um, and to follow up with that, this was a very, we, we, we think Chainlink is amazing. You know, Chainlink is going to be a key part of this digital revolution. And they recently posted a tweet that says 5 to 10% of all assets globally will be digitized by 2030, according to Northern Trust and HSBC, keeping on that theme. Asset services will need to learn to support their clients to a T plus zero operational world where execution and settlements of trades occur simultaneously and the distributed ledger serves as a single or golden source of data for all counterparts. 
So the revolution is well and truly here. It's well and truly underway. You are going to have a merging of both private and public blockchains in the same way that you have um, paid for content on the internet, perhaps as an example, and, and, and free content. You know, it's all accessible on the internet. Um, it's just some of it's behind firewalls and things like that. So similar things going to happen with blockchain. It's extremely exciting. You know, when we look at this market, and we'll show you the total market cap, um, it sits at $1.3 trillion. Let's get rid of whatever draws we've got on here. It sits at $1.3 trillion. This is a 10 plus trillion dollar industry, ladies and gentlemen, just based on public blockchains, in my opinion. And that wave is something that we want to have a surfboard ready to ride. It's here. Hopefully we, got, we are uh, continuing to kind of... Um, show people some of the cryptocurrencies that we think are going to do very well um, in that revolution. Some of them are already partnered with massive institutions and everything in between. Um, but we'll come back to this in just a second. Let's go over to the traditional markets, which are doing quite well. S&P 500 NASDAQ finishes higher to clinch longest winning streak since 2021. Now, if you guys think about our overall thesis that we've had for this year, it's that we've understood the effect of rates on the market. And it's actually, believe it or not, rates actually have a positive effect on the equity market, certainly if you overlay the Fed funds on top of the S&P 500. You don't need to take my word for it. Please go and check out the chart. You know, I love it how people try and argue with facts. There, are, there is such a thing as, as facts in this world, guys. Um, and introducing a gray area to a fact, I think is just, it's just not helpful at all. Uh, but in the world that we currently live, that's constantly something that people try and do. Anyway, we don't want to go down that rabbit hole. Um, the markets, in our opinion, are going to do well up until the shitstorm that the yield curve is predicting uh, and likely an announcement of a recession. Um, that means that based on historically the S&P, you know, you, rates lag. This is, what, this is how we're going to get to that sort of these higher prices. And on top of that, the S&P usually rallies within 2% of its high two months prior to a recession. We're not there yet, and we're getting a lot of data that's suggesting this. And stuff like this is just consistently confirming what we're talking about. You've got Microsoft closes at an all-time high on fresh open AI-related optimism. AI is likely going to be a fundamental narrative that we've got technical support for. This is tweeted by David Bell. Goldman's Scott Rubner says the market is primed for a grind higher into year-end as short covering has changed the um, state. Higher prices bring out more buyers. And we agree, you know, equity investors are happy investors. They are glass half full people generally. Um, and ultimately, you know, you, you, we've been climbing this wall of worry. A lot of the worry that's been put out there has been unfounded. You get the, constantly these niche areas in the economy that have been brought to the forefront as horrific that don't represent the broader economy. The broader economy, if you take the Fed stats for it, and we all know that the Fed you know, and most government parties twist things. Um, not that the federal government party, but if you take them at face value and the data that we're getting, things actually don't seem that bad at all. Uh, and, and, and that's the face of it. Talking about the stock market, you've got Jamie Dimon, CEO at JP Morgan, is liquidating shares currently worth 141 million. CEOs and risk officers at other banks are also dumping shares rapidly. Join the dots. So why is this? Well, it's because the banking sector is in a lot of trouble. Uh, and the reason the banking sector is in a lot of trouble is quite simply due to the bond market, you know, and the failing of the bond market getting a bid. This quite accurately reflects the banking sector. And actually, if you were to look at uh, a banking stock, which we can do in a second, it, it looks similar to this. Um, and the reason being is because every bank out there, their collateral typically is held in bonds. And bonds have just been, a lot of them long dated bonds, just been getting absolutely killed. This is a 20 year plus. You know, if we look at uh, Bank of America, it looks very similar. This just goes with the bond market. So I don't think it's a broader reflection. I don't think these guys are selling because they think the stock market's going to crash. I think they're likely selling because they know that potentially it's not over for the pain in the bond market and the banking sector. However, the thing that you've got to account for is that is going to have crossover. Actually, JP Morgan Chase & Co. doesn't look bad at all, does it? So maybe he's getting out in expectation and worry that 
um, you essentially could be having further pain for the bond market. You know, this just looks like it's in a channel that you're waiting to break out of. However, albeit interesting, you know, you've got Larry Fink doing a similar thing. Definitely something to watch, in my opinion. Um, so we're all good as far as we're concerned on the stock market. We still expect higher prices and targets to be met. Talking about Microsoft, we'll just fly past it. Microsoft is actually now at new all-time highs um, on convincing volume. S&P working its way up after a retest. Things like Tesla, you know, things seem to be terminated. This is like almost doing what Bitcoin did. If it looks at Microsoft, Google closing that gap that we identified. Meta looks pretty good. Stock market looks good. It looks healthy. Uh, and we're going into a Santa Claus rally, most likely. Um, the real question is, and is there any sort of alpha that we can get from the stock market doing what it's doing and it looks primed to potentially see more upside? Well, that has to be coupled with dollar downside. Is this just a retest? Rather a, um, uh, you know, this has got to come down, in my opinion, and turn out to be a wick. You are seeing big wicks come in on the daily candles to, to the short side more so than the long side. It's all about dollars, guys. Uh, and we've shown this time and time again, but we'll just pull the S&P up. We'll pull Bitcoin and the S&P up. Just to show this once more, you know, you can see the very clear Bitcoin would have bottomed at the same time as the stock market, I believe, if it wasn't for um, FTX. That's my opinion on that. You know, dollar up, Bitcoin down, dollar down, Bitcoin and risk up. You know, we've run into this kind of uh, sticky period, if you will, up until the potential speculation in this range form for the dollar. And now it's rolling out of it. You can see what equities are doing. That's got to continue. It's not going to be a straightforward journey, guys. There are going to be twists and turns in it. But if the dollar then does this, risk, which we're already seeing, is going to do that. And that's the real game here. A little bit of interesting news. SEC registered investment advisor firm Two Primes has seen $2 billion in demand for Bitcoin-backed fiat loans since it started offering them in September. So this is... With the legitimization of Bitcoin as an asset with an ETF, it opens up the, 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 this huge realm of possibilities. Not only does it allow um, institutions to get their hands on Bitcoin, which they will do, certainly from a portfolio management point of view, it's beneficial to have a uncorrelated in many respects asset on your um, in your portfolio. It's essentially going to do a number of things. You know, this is what real alpha is. It's going to increase returns and also minimize risk due to the uncorrelation. Uh, and also you're going to have products that are going to be developed around Bitcoin, which is going to further its demand. You will enter a world where you have altcoin ETFs and so on and so forth. You know, we, we are getting there. I think that what we're seeing, for example, like DTCC, which is literally a key part of the traditional financial infrastructure, buying security, who have partnered with the likes of Stellar Lumens and a number of other cryptos, is a precursor to what way this space is going from a regulatory point of view. It's going to be allowed, it's going to be approved, but they're going to um, try and maintain it within their box as much as possible, certainly within the likes of the United States. So really what we're looking for, just to summarize things, is a rolling of the dollar. Markets generally look good. Gold, mm. I've got my slight concerns with gold, to be honest. Uh, it may take longer to wind up. A, a, a high gold is not good for fiat systems. However, um, if the dollar rolls, gold's likely going to go in that direction. Stock market looks to be setting up for higher prices. Let's talk about Bitcoin very, very quickly. I don't like the fact that you're grinding up here, but it's it's a strong market. Don't bet against the trend. You know, we've been very right on calling bull for Bitcoin back here. We, we consistently get comments saying we're not in a bull market. And, I, you know, it's not something that I'm looking to argue with people about. In my opinion, this is where there was a fundamental change in the downward market. And since then, Bitcoin's up 109%. Is that not a bull market? I don't really know traditionally. And also for the extended period of time that it's been in, an uptrend, for me, that would be a bull. Altcoins, you could argue, potentially not, but they are showing signs of life and really repeating what they did in 2019 going into 2020. That's all I've got for you guys. If you've enjoyed the content, like us, appreciate it, so as a comment, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Thanks for watching. See you in the next.